Good evening, everyone. I wanted to do our family devotional for this Wednesday. Good to have everybody online, and hopefully you've been enjoying our online worship service on Sunday, and there's some good news that perhaps the state's going to start opening up, and we're excited about that. And, and with time, it will happen. We will be back together to worship on Sunday morning. So I want to talk about the idea of randomness. And so I walked around my office and picked up a few of the random things that I have in here. And it's kind of amazing how much odd things I accumulate in my office through the years. And so I have right here this Coke can, as you can see, and I love Coca-Cola, but it has uh, on the back of it, legend it's probably backwards on your screen but it says legend and i have that and i actually have a couple of those because people brought those to me as gifts and that made me happy right here is a first place little plaque from when i was in grade six i won the provincial championship in chess and so i was the uh, number one ranked chess player uh, when i was in the sixth grade uh, for sixth grade, uh, sixth grade uh, in the province. So that was kind of cool. I still have that from 1989. And then I have this uh, autograph puck from Nathan McKinnon. And Nathan McKinnon is from Nova Scotia, where I grew up. And we certainly want to keep Nova Scotia in our prayers this week. They had a, a terrible mass shooting. And just the this, the whole province is just mourning that and, and it's hard for them to even comprehend somebody in that area doing that so nathan mckinnon he plays for the colorado avalanche autograph puck and then i have this uh clock a uh, little golfer's clock which has been sitting here for almost 12 years now doesn't work anymore and then here's probably the, the, the most random of random. So here's just something totally random that I have. Here is a framed picture of dollar bills that have been made into a shirt. And so there's little buttons on there. And I'm not sure how many dollar bills this is, but it's kind of fascinating, kind of cool. And someone gave me that as a present many, many years ago when I was in Tennessee. They made it for me, I believe, as a, a going away present, I think. Uh, so that was that's kind of random. So let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. And in this chapter, it it's mostly just a list that Paul gives of people in that congregation. And we read that, and we just kind of maybe, I think, glance over it a lot of times because, you know, who are these people? I don't really know them. They're not really that important to us. And it just comes off like a random list of names. So look what it says in Romans chapter 16, verses, uh, uh, well, we could read the, almost the entire chapter. So let's just kind of jump into this. Uh, verse 1, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a servant of the church, which is at uh, Caesarea, that you receive her. And then in verse 3, he gets greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who for my life risked their own necks, to whom not only do I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Then he talks about in verse 5, greet the church that is in their house, greet and this is where he just goes into a bunch of names. And we all know if I read all these names, I'm going to mispronounce them all. But he mentions Mary. Uh, he meet uh, Junius. Uh, he talks about Urbanus. And, oh, wow, there's so many names here that, that I have no clue how to pronounce. So, parents, you need to read these names to your uh, kids and go through them all. You got Julia here. And then at the very end, and this is a little fascinating, in verse 16, greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. And then he goes on continuing, and then he talks about some more people that he 
mentions. And so almost the entire chapter is just a listing of people that he greets. He says hello to, uh, let them know I'm thinking about them. And we read it, and I don't know if we spend a lot of time studying it because it just feels random to us. We don't know these people. But I want to really highlight this one thought for us tonight. These aren't random people. These are people that Paul knows or he's longing to meet, people that have been involved in the church, who he has a relationship with, that he wants to see soon, that they have served him or he has served them. And these are people that he has a relationship with, a relationship. So think about some of the people you have a relationship with at the Castle Rock Church of Christ. Some of the people during this quarantine that you haven't got to see face to face, but you're really looking forward to seeing again. And maybe one of the assignments that you can do tonight with your kids is have them make a list. That's some of the people that they're really wanting to see. And as Cast Rock is very focused on intergenerational ministry of bringing all the age groups together, I wonder what that list would look like. Of course, it would look like a lot of their friends, a lot of their peers, but I wonder who else they're looking forward to seeing. And I think that's something that we could talk about is the relationships that we have one another in the body. The reason that this has been hard is because we want to see each other. We want to build each other up. We, we come to worship and we, we praise God. We, we, we celebrate the Lord. But we also edify one another. And it's about the relationships and the connections that we make. And those are so precious to us that we're really missing at this time. And we're excited about seeing each other again. And, you know, maybe some of the people that we are really missing could be just random. Like, some of the people that we're really looking to see, we may not talk to all the time, but it would be kind of fun to spend some time with and to see them again. They have those idiosyncrasies, their habits that we just miss because that's who that person is. So, think about your list. Think about the list that you would write right now, if you were to write a letter to the Castle Rock Church of Christ, and let's say you've been gone for five years, and you're writing a letter to us, who are some of the people you'd mention, and what would you say about them? What would you say to them if you could only write a letter to the entire church that was going to be read in front of everybody? What would you say about them? And I think that's a great discussion starter that we could begin with. Now, I, I know some of us would be a little tempted to make a few jokes. To make a few jokes. And I know if I was to write a letter for the Castle Rock Church of Christ, I would be amiss if I did not make a joke about Keith Walsh. If I didn't put down Keith Walsh, it just wouldn't be the same. And if I didn't mention... Dale Darby, and make a joke about him, it, it just wouldn't have been the same. You know, there's just certain people you got to make a joke about. Glenn Peters, him and Melanie moved away recently. And it breaks my heart because I like making jokes about him. And I would make a joke about Jerry Beesbore and Mike Burgess. You know, what would be really hard for me is my letter would be me probably making fun of people. Glad Paul, though, praised him, and he was building them up. Paul Paul was a lot better man than me. I would want to tease people and, and make jokes. So think about what list you would make and who would you would mention in your list. It was so good that to have you tuned in. I miss you. Looking forward to us being together soon. And, and thanks so much for tuning in to our Wednesday night devotional. Thanks. <laughs>